Hi everybody, I'm Ben Wangberg, and this is my second video post. Middlesex is a story about transition and transformation, for Cal and his grandparents alike. The Stephanitis came from a long line of silk farmers, passing on the techniques of their forebears from one generation to the next. Silkworms transform into moths after building a cocoon out of, you guessed it, silk. Like the silkworm, Desdemona and Lefty make a similar transition aboard their ship to America, the Gilia. In order to avoid speculation of being brother and sister, the Stephanides board the ship as if they have no relation to one another. They build an elaborate plan to eventually meet and soon marry. In creating elaborate stories to change their identities, Desdemona, on page 67, remarks that she had a brother, but he ran off with a Turkish girl. Lefty proposes, I think love breaks all taboos, don't you? In this exchange, we see both Desdemona and Lefty attempting to reconcile their fears about the path they are taking with the very real love that has begun to emerge between them. Just like Desdemona's silkworms, the Stephanides are wrapping themselves in a cocoon of silken stories, ready to emerge as full-grown adults on the other side of the ocean. The young couple makes their way from Ellis Island and New York to Detroit, where their cousin Sor Molina is already married and already living. On page 85, when she meets Lefty at the bus depot to pick him up, Sor Molina warns Lefty, since you'll be living with us, don't talk politics with my husband. This sentiment feels especially relevant in our current political climate. The 2016 presidential election and campaign have changed the way politics are discussed in many households across the country. It has become increasingly difficult to have rational, issue-based discussions with many of the people I have had productive arguments with in the past. Now, however, much like Sor Molina's husband, much of politics has become tribal in nature. There seems to be too much us versus them and not enough working together to find common solutions to persistent problems. I hope we can move beyond a point where we disown political discourse. We could all do a lot better to be more agreeable when we're disagreeing. I was brought up on the ideals of American capitalism, the puritanical belief that an honest day's work is virtuous in and of itself, and that entrepreneurs with the American spirit like Henry Ford are the true heroes of American democracy. Cal does not want the reader to believe that, and on page 95, he argues, it is historical fact that, quote, people stopped being human in 1913, as Henry Ford rolled out the assembly line. Ford's assembly line allowed anyone to learn a rudimentary skill in minimal time and apply that skill as one part of a grand design. Cal's belief that this dumbing down of labor strips a person of his humanity and his individuality challenges my historical view of the value of hard work. It forces me to consider how American industry was built on the backs of immigrants in the 20th century and the enslavement of Africans in the 19th century. Cal's assertion challenges my long-held belief that capitalism serves an ultimate good in and of itself. Thinking about American industry's exploitation of the labor force makes other forms of economies, eco economies more noticeably appealing to me, and it makes me reconsider much of what I've been brought up to believe about American exceptionalism.